Welcome back to Miller Music Studios TV. As you may recall, we're working our way around the circle of fifths for all of our major scales. We've already learned C major, so it's time to go up a fifth to G major. Let's go to the piano and learn. As you recall. <laughs> hey, <cool. laughs> Sorry. As you recall from piano lesson number three. Wait a minute. I can pull myself together. You gotta get composure. <gasps> As you'll recall from piano lesson number three, we learned the C major scale. We were looking at the circle of fifths and found that C major has no sharps and no flats. Actually, we found that key signature by finding two tetrachords beginning on a C. And a tetrachord is four notes in alphabetical order with the pattern of whole step, which is skipping one key, another whole step, D to E, we skipped one key, and E to F is a half step. You skip no key. Then you can start a whole step higher. You go to the next tetrachord. G to A is a whole step. A to B is a whole step. And B to C is a half step because it has no keys in between. So by taking two tetrachords joined by a whole step and beginning on a C, we found the C major scale's key signature is no sharps and no flats. Working our way around the circle of fifths, what we do is we take that C major scale and we count up five notes beginning on a C. One, two, three, four, five. And that's considered counting up a fifth. So now we're up a fifth starting on the G and we have to do the exact same thing. We need two tetrachords joined by a whole step. So G to A is a whole step, A to B is a whole step, B to C is a half step. And then you start a whole step higher on a D. D to E is a whole step. E to F sharp, remember a sharp is what raises a key to the right. The nearest key to the right is a sharp. So F sharp, because from E to F sharp has to be a whole step. So we're skipping a key. And then F sharp to G is a half step. So look at that. We have our first sharp in our scales. So G major has the key signature of one sharp F sharp and it's played like this in tetrachords. And that's how you should practice the G major scale until you get comfortable with it. When you are comfortable with it, go on to thumb turns, and that would be the same fingering as we did for C major. You start in the right hand with the finger number one, then two, three, and then your thumb goes under to C, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one, three over, two, one. And then the left hand. Five, four, three, two, one, three over, two, one. One, two, three, thumb under, two, three, four, five. Hands together. That's the scale that you would play before you play a G major piece. So for my students, here's an example. Let's say you're playing for the National Guild of Piano Teachers exams and you're going to play Minuet 3 by Petzold. Um, first you would play your G major scale, the cadence, which we haven't gotten to yet, but then here's the piece that you would play. Now for my more advanced students, 
who are doing NISMA, New York State, New York State School Music Association. You'll put your metronome on whatever number they say to do. In this case, I'm going to put it on 72. And you're going to do one octave G major scale. Uh, actually, you should do hands separately, but I'm going to do uh, hands together just to save time. And you're going to do one octave in quarter notes, two octaves in eighth notes, three octaves in triplets, and four octaves in sixteenths. Okay, let's start with quarter notes. sharp F sharp. Next lesson, bring your chord cards because we're going to make G major, G minor, G diminished, and G augmented chords and we're going to learn the arpeggios for that also and the proper fingering. The next lesson will be the relative minor of G major and that would be E minor, natural, harmonic, and melodic minor. So keep practicing the ones that we've got on there so far on all these videos and I hope you have fun. Till we meet again, happy practicing!